Hey guys, it's Mr. Drury with our second video. Today we are talking about ornaments, and that means that we're talking about flams, drags, or ruffs. I like calling them ruffs because they remind me of puppy dogs. Three stroke ruffs and four stroke ruffs. Luckily, we only have to really worry about a four stroke ruff. I've yet to encounter anything more than a four stroke ruff, but 2020 is off to a very interesting start, and I would not be surprised by the time I hit 2021 that I don't encounter a five stroke ruff. But for all our purposes, we're just gonna kind of go through the four stroke rough. And what we'll find is that a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, when we talk about a rough, three stroke rough, four stroke rough, they're very similar concepts. And so if we can kind of think about how to approach one of them, we can apply that to the other two. So let's get started. Ornaments. And I like using this analogy when I first start talking about ornaments. When we think of an ornament, what's the first thing that we think about? We think of a Christmas tree, right? So we think of this big Christmas tree with all these little ornaments all over it. Well, the same thing kind of applies to music. We have this really big note, like a quarter note, and we have all these little rhythms that are attached to it, the ornaments, right? So let's go back to a Christmas tree. If I didn't have a tree, the ornaments would be completely useless, it would be absolutely useless. So what that means is the tree is the most important part of a Christmas tree. Again, without a tree, there'd be no ornaments. Well, the same thing is applied to music. Without that quarter note or that half note or that whole note or whatever the big note is, without that, the little notes make no sense, make absolutely no sense. So the first thing that, the example that I wanna use is if you can get a Sarone book, and I'll probably have that posted, I'll get a PDF posted to you guys, but I'm looking at Sarone Etude number 31, and it's my favorite Sarone Etude. And in fact, I'm gonna do another video where we dig into this Etude even further, okay? But I love how it approaches ornaments. So, I'm gonna start with variation one, and I'm just gonna play it for you outright. So, let's dig into that just a little bit. Tons of ornaments, right? But what's most important that did not change was the skeletal rhythm. At the end of the day, I should hear this, which is the theme. The first six lines of the piece, yes. The most common mistake that kids will make when they come in here is that they will sacrifice the rhythmic integrity just to get the ornaments to come out. And guys, in the hierarchy of sin, of musical sin, right, it is way more, way more of a sin, of a musical sin, to sacrifice the rhythm for the sake of getting an ornament versus sacrificing the ornament to get a good rhythm. They're not equal. Rhythm is key. So, first things first and foremost when we talk about ornaments, the rhythm does not change. First things first. So, if my figure is, I better hear, that is most important. So, now let's kind of dig into the mechanics of these ornaments. So, crash course on these. Flams, the most Common problem with students when they come to me is that we get flat flams. That was actually a really good one. A really good flat flam, not a really good flam. Right? So what happens is that there's not enough delineation between your two heights. There's not enough height difference between the primary note, and I'm doing a right hand flam, and uh, the grace note. So the analogy that I use to this is as macabre as it seems, is to pretend that you're a guillotine. Right? So a guillotine is the thing that chops the heads off in medieval France. It was the, 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 
the, the execution or technique. But if you really think about it, that's from a physics standpoint kind of what's happening. Your grace note is kind of like the person that you're trying to chop the head off and the dig note is the axe that comes down and chops the head off. You have to keep the person still and as low as you can. You don't want them moving around. You don't want them floating up into Narnia. You want them nice and low, right? So you can chop the head off. So first things first, there's a, there has to be a huge delineation. We want this nice ch sound. Another common problem is say you get yourself nice and set up and you have lots of good height, but all of a sudden we get a flat flam. What happens is, and this is very musical, you add a prep stroke before you play. And again, that's very musical. That's like an oboist breathing, a horn player breathing. Very musical. Lift, I encourage you, keep your grace note low. Lift, take your breath with the primary note. So it looks like this. If you want to add a breath. And that's very musical. I would highly suggest that. It'll allow you to feel the space better, the note value. So that's my spiel on flam. Just make sure that your grace note is as low to the drum as it can be. And that's gonna be a common thing for us going forward is keeping your grace note low. So now let's talk about roughs, three stroke roughs and four stroke roughs. I love the philosophy of Dr. John Parks from Florida State on how he approaches ornaments. And that is that ornaments should crescendo. They should lead into the primary note. When we're talking about a rough, or a three-stroke rough, or a four-stroke rough, I think that it's brilliant. It should. It, these tiny notes, no matter how many there are, they should lead into the primary note. That musically makes sense, regardless of whether there's a crescendo written or not. Okay? So, what that means is that we have to increase the height of these ornaments when we're starting from such a low height. And how we do that is we highly upstroke these rudiments, or these ornaments. So, I mean, it, technically it's a rough is an ornament, uh, is a rudiment. Technically it's part of the standard 26th. So, we do an upstroke. So what happens is regardless of whether the ornament is open or closed, there is an upstroke associated with it. Let me see if I can achieve this. So this is an open. Right, we see how my grace note lands upward. Now let's try a close. Right? So my goal is to get a crescendo, a lead-in, into that primary note. The, of course, there are kinesthetic things that we have to think about when doing a drag, but if we're focused on the sound of what it is that we're trying to create, guys, you're going to have a much easier time getting the mechanics correct. If it doesn't sound right, if it doesn't sound like an appropriate rough, chances are you need to adjust what you're doing mechanically and listen. Ask yourself, is your stick close to the drum, right? Are we crescendoing to the primary note? Another problem that kids have in regards to ornaments, and I see this more with three and four stroke roughs than I do the drag per se. Most times it, we can achieve the drag. Um, but with the three stroke rough, it's three different motions. So it's, now this is how I do it. Some people do right, right, left, right. Some people do left, right, left, right. I do a right, left, left, right. I am a lefty and it just makes more sense for me to do a three stroke rough, right, left, left, right. So that would be a putta using a putta. What a common problem with students is that they think of that right, left, left, right, and I teach my kids to do it that way. They think of that as um, three different motions. They think right, left, left, right, and it sounds like three different motions. Right? Do we hear that? And it needs to be connected. So how I teach them to do it is get your beads as low as you can. So if we are crescendoing, this first tap, this first right, is the lowest note. I'm a fan of anime. I love Dragon Ball series. I like thinking of three stroke and four stroke roughs as like mini Kamehas. It takes a lot of energy and it happens really, really, really fast. So I think of them as like mini Kamehas, right? So I keep my sticks as low as they can. And I try and get them. It takes a lot of energy to do them.
Some of them a little bit more su successful than the others. But that's my thought process. So a four stroke breath. Kame, hame. Lots of energy into one stroke. Oftentimes students are a little bit lazy with how much energy it really takes to achieve three stroke roughs and four stroke roughs. It takes so much energy. The worst thing that you could have is to hear every single sound. So if I was doing a four stroke rough, right? It would sound like almost like a five stroke roll, but a very bad five stroke roll because I can hear your hands, right? So make sure that we're keeping our beads as low as we can and putting lots of energy into those strokes. All right, so that's my spiel on ornaments. I hope you found this video success, uh, successfully helpful for you. So keep in touch, more videos to come. Hope you guys are staying safe, washing your hands, and doing all the fun quarantine things I'm sure you're doing right now. Go Grand Oaks Percussion, Woo!